March 5th. We are so excited that you are joining us. Our friends from La Foresta, they have a restaurant in Killingworth. They are back in the kitchen making a lovely spring salad. They also have a new menu coming out, so you're going to want to check it out. Plus, summer brides, now's the time to be booking your trial looks. Andrea from MBD Beauty stopped by to chat trends on how you should set up those appointments. And Theater Works in Hartford has a new production. It is starting next week. You don't want to miss it, so we're going to bring you all the details on that as well. But first, today's dish is all presented by Stone Academy. Jeopardy host Alex Trebek is giving an update on his health. He posted a video on the Jeopardy Twitter account. Now, it's been a year since he was diagnosed with stage 4 pancreatic cancer. The one-year survival rate for stage 4 pancreatic cancer patients is 18%. I'm very happy to report I have just reached that marker. Now, I'd be lying if I said the journey had been an easy one. There were some good days, but a lot of not-so-good days. Now, Trebek went on to say that there were times he was in a lot of pain and times he felt very depressed. He's asking people to keep a positive attitude and promises to keep everyone posted. And, of course, you could watch Trebek on Jeopardy! weeknights right here on Channel 8. Disney fans, there's finally a sequel to a beloved movie. The cast is ready to put a spell on you, and so is Adam Shankman. Variety is reporting that he will direct Hocus Pocus 2 for Disney+. Plus. It will be the sequel to the 1993 cult classic. Shankman is best known for directing the 2007 version of Hairspray, in addition to a step up and a walk to remember. The annual Cherry Blossom Festival in Washington, D.C. is just a few weeks away. The National Park Service is announcing that March 27th through the 30th is going to be peak bloom. Peak means 70% of the blooming. However, they could be starting before and last longer depending on the weather. From the time we'll start seeing the first trees flower until the last petals come off, if the weather cooperates, if we don't get high winds or heavy rain, there can be blossoms on the trees for two weeks, maybe even longer. Always such a pretty time down there. The National Park Service says you can expect to start seeing some blooms as early as next week. Well, Duncan is trying to turn TGIF into TGIFDF. Thank goodness it's free Donut Friday. Duncan is giving away a free donut with the purchase of any drink every Friday this month. You have to be a Dunkin' Donuts Perks member. You can enroll on the Dunkin' Donut app or ddperks.com. The deal is available at participating restaurants in the U.S. Duncan is also running a contest in which four people can win free donuts for a year. Good luck. Now to Nick Willinda's historic walk across the Messiah volcano, inching his way over a lake of molten lava on a wire more than just an inch thick. ABC's Will Reeve has all the details. Nick Willenda stepping into history, becoming the first person to ever cross a wire above an active volcano. Oh my God. Live in prime time, his aerialist wife, Erin Deera, the opening act. Nick watching from the edge of the crater with pride as she hung by her teeth. What a sight. With his wife back on solid ground, it was time for Nick to take his first steps in the thick fog, 1,800 feet off the ground. Wearing goggles and a mask to fight the Messiah's toxic gases, enveloped by the plume of sulfuric acid, you can only see him with a thermal camera showing his heat signature. It's a storm. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. A heart stopping moment seven minutes in. Well, the cable was just around my neck. But he stayed calm as he crossed the most dangerous part of the walk, right above that 2,000 degree lava. Whew, the gas moving under me. 30 minutes into his feet, drenched in sweat, the final step. And death was defeated. What goes through your mind when you're watching the love of your life oh my God. 1,800 feet away? It's funny, um, I was watching him on the big screen and I could see the stress in his face and I was like, I'm sorry, I can't. I told my in-laws, I was like, I can't, I can't watch that. And my dad's Most mic was open, yeah. so I heard you saying all of that. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was like, oh, I guess I should sorry. smile, but I got a mask on. You can't see it anyway. What does it mean to be surrounded by your family for this? I wouldn't do it without them. There'd be no, no reason to. This is all about family and legacy and family history and, and, um, and again, inspiring people that nothing's impossible. 